Hello everyone, welcome to a foreign farming in the Philippines. Well, it's it's now day eight, and it's actually day seven because this uh, incubator started out on day two. Um, I've been meaning to do this for three nights, but every night about this time it started raining, and it has again. Uh, have to wait for night because I'm going to be candling the eggs tonight if I can get the candler to work. But I'm also going to uh, set the set the bottom two trays with eggs. So I'm going to begin with that and uh, of course my magic marker is no longer out here. Wonderful. Well. I'll just have to remember to mark it on the calendar with something. I had been writing the set dates on top of the incubator. Hopefully this rain will die down. It's probably going to take me 30 minutes to set these eggs. Uh, hopefully the rain will die down a little bit and you won't have to put up with the uh, noise from the rain hitting the roof because it's only about a foot above my head. So I'll be back in a minute. All right, well, we've got exactly 50 in there. These are broilers on this side. I think there's nine of them. Two, three, six, the yeah, there's nine broilers and 41 of the Kabir. You know, that's pretty amazing. Um, they we're getting so many eggs out of those broiler hens. We've only got two, uh, but they're like 20% of the eggs. Whereas we have almost 40 of the Kabir hens, and uh, we've only got uh, 41 eggs in like uh, 10 days. So it's pretty amazing. The broilers, they're not commercial layers because even though I have come to find out they're prolific layers, uh, they eat a lot. I mean, they, <laughs> they weigh as much as a small turkey. So you get an egg out of them just like you do the Kabir more, but they eat three or four times as much feed. So that's why leghorns are used to lay eggs and not broilers. All right, well, slight change. I had forgotten I'd had another partial tray of Kabir eggs there, so what I've done is I've taken the broilers out, the broiler eggs, I've taken them out and put them over here uh, with the natives. Uh, so we've got 54 of the Kabir eggs in this, uh, in the bottom tray, and we've got the nine natives here or the nine broilers here and we've got let's see four eight twelve sixteen twenty of the uh, natives so I'm gonna get this all put together and then we'll start uh, candling there's also you know I'm sure this egg right here is a double yolk well I'm not sure and it's usually when they're this large, they're a double yolk. But usually when they're a double yolk, they're a little longer. Um, you know what? Just for giggles, I'm going to set that in there and see what happens. Uh, if it doesn't, I'll candle it in six days. And if it hasn't caught on, then it'll be dog food. It is a broiler egg, so I'll put it up there with the broiler. So we've set ten broilers. Uh, one's big. One's a big if. These native eggs are a bit dirty. Um, kind of the rule of thumb is, is not to set uh, dirty eggs. Well, number one rule of thumb is, is don't clean them. Uh, in my old age, I've forgotten what the name of the coating is. There's a coating on these eggs when they come out of the hen, an antibacterial coating. It's right on the tip of my tongue. I can't remember what it is. But anyway, um, and it's effective up to a point, but usually when eggs are soiled this badly, uh, it's, it's not that effective. But if you wash it off, then the egg has 
basically no protection from bacteria and it also you'll see during the candling that these eggshells are porous um, when you wash them you you can fill in the pores and uh, it'll be that much less oxygen transfer for the embryos because these embryos and these chicks breathe through the shell believe it or not uh, many of you I'm sure you've slept with a blanket over your head and you didn't suffocate because there's enough air that goes through the holes in the blanket to uh, circulate the you know there's enough air circulation to keep enough oxygen to keep us from dying it's the same thing with these eggs there's just enough air that seeps through the shell uh, to oxygenate the embryo and if you wash it uh, it'll fill in so the, 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 it'll look kind of like a golf ball and just imagine uh, if you were spreading bubble gum on a, on a golf ball it'd be nice and smooth uh, and, but it would also the dips in it, the, the dimples in it would be filled with bubble gum so it's the same thing on a much smaller level you're just filling in the uh, low parts of the egg with uh, whatever you're washing off so hang on we'll begin the candling I was gonna wait until the alarm went off that's the temperature alarm but I wanted to because I'm checking a few just to make so it's a, a good video I'm checking a few beforehand to show good examples you can see that little dark spot that you see moving around in there is the eye of that chick you can see it moving in there now this is day eight you can just see him moving around in there and I'm in pretty close but back out a little bit see there he's moving you see that little dark spot that's moving around in there that's the chick's eye now it's hard to tell this is a darker shelled egg and so you can see if you really look close the the veins Maybe if I come up to the top, you can see them a little more clearly. There you go. You see those little veins? The little dark lines? Those are the, those are the veins of the chick. I hope this is focusing. Bring it in here real close. Uh, that's the blood supply. And you can see it looks spotty. Those are the pores that I was talking about. Uh, an eggshell isn't solid it's porous and the the lighter parts that you're seeing are the thinnest part of the egg Let's see if we can get this guy to move around some more at this stage you've got to be extremely careful moving them around yeah he's he's content now that's that's that little chick's eye right there. You're looking. You're you guys are eye to eye with him. So I'll put this little guy back. And I apologize for the beeping, but I wanted to catch him moving around some. Now this is a broiler egg, so it's it's very light. The the egg itself is very light colored. And so it's usually very easy to tell if uh, it's viable, if there's an embryo or not. Now I'm going to very, very gently, extremely gently, turn this egg upside down. Just this, just because I'm trying to show you guys something. This could actually kill an embryo what I'm doing right here turning it upside down and rotating it like that I would I'm calling this egg a dud because I don't see any any veins in it and it should on a light colored egg like that it should be really easy to tell if I can find another really really light colored egg in here maybe this one. Oh, come on light I guess it goes off after a while. Maybe it's got a 
a heat thing on it. There we go. You can really only do this in the dark. And this candler, I need to I need to go around it with tape and make this because it's it's shining blue through. You can see the blue through the plastic. That is uh, clouding the light. This one here might be an okay one to look at. Again, you guys are eye to eye with that little chick. And maybe he'll move around in there for us. Yep, he's moving around. See him? See that little dark spot? That's the chick's eye, and uh, he's moving around. Now, usually at day five, you can just start to see the veins. Uh, but at this stage, there it's a, it's you know we're at day eight, so we're more than a third of the way through. You can see up here on the top, this lighter, this lighter area, you know how, how good it's coming in on video. There's a little light cup right on the top. Maybe you can tell it's maybe 5% of the egg. That's the air sac. And this is the problem. It should be larger than that at day 8. And that's the problem I've been having with these eggs. It's... Um, they're just they're not drying out enough you can clearly see the the egg sac in this one it's the top part of the egg that's a different color now this one is about the right size basically what is happening is that the egg is evaporating out the moisture in the in the egg is evaporating out because there has to be room for the chicken there to move as he gets closer to hatching and move this little guy around. All right, the alarm's going to go off here shortly. Now this one, I'm pretty much there. It goes. This one I would call uh, not viable because I see no veins. And I see no eye, I see no movement. I really, I'm, I'm, like I say, I've been trying to get this done for three days. We're a few days late to really see veins. Maybe, well, we'll just keep picking them up and keep trying them. I've got about another three minutes here before I've got to do something else. There you go. You can clearly see the egg sac in this one, or the, the uh, air sac in this one. It's the top part that's a little... Uh, differently colored. At day five, you can see the veins pretty pretty clearly. It looks like a spider web in there. On white eggs, it's pretty easy to see, but on these darker eggs, it can be tough. There he is, right there. Now, see, this guy's wanting to move around for us too. Well, he moved. But I don't know if he's gonna do it. I don't know if he's gonna dance for us like the other ones did. I'll rotate him just a little bit. See if I can wake him up. Of course, now the camera's out of focus. You can you can kind of see the veins in it right now. And I apologize for my camera. This camera's not a, a low light camera, and we're in the dark. So, uh, that's candling. I'm going to take a few. I'm going to shut this off, and I'm just going to take like four out of the, the next tray down. Because those are ones I'm doing for someone else. And there's some actual white eggs in there. So, we'll give those a shot. No, again, the focus. Sorry about that, guys. I'll edit that little part out. Well, for some reason, the camera stopped. Maybe I didn't even start it on this. But anyway, um, is that a dirty spot or is that an eye? That's a dirty spot. You can see the veins. 
in this one. This is probably the clearest picture that I've taken of the veins. You see it just looks like a little spider web in there. Those are the those are the veins of the chick. And he's right up at the top. You can see his his eye right at the top. So this is a pretty good example. Even though we're a couple days late, like I say on white eggs, it's much easier to tell than it is on brown eggs. So I'm going to do the last one. I've got four of these here. This is the last one of the ones I'm incubating for another gentleman. And I'm, I'm not seeing... No. The dark the dark shadow there, that's the yolk. And I'm not seeing veins coming out of this one. But I am nonetheless going to leave this in the incubator. And I'll check them I'll, I'm going to check all these eggs again in 5 days. So, that's the candling. Turn this light back on so the camera will actually work. I am hoping that because uh, my camera just shut off and usually it just shuts off when I haven't been recording. Um, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a little bit more video before I put this all back together because I'm not sure if it was recording. Uh, if it was recording then I'll just delete this little bit. All right, these are the eggs that I'm incubating for someone else. You can clearly see the egg sac in the top, the airspace, the egg sac, the airspace. That's this. You can see the the veins. I hope you can see them. I can clearly see them. What else we got here? I'm not too sure about this one. I'm gonna take it back. Alright, that's that little chick's eye right there. And you can see the veins. There's a large vein on the lower right hand side and he's moved so you can't really see his eye anymore. Let me see if I can rotate the egg just a little bit. There's a large vein right there. You can clearly see that. Peekaboo! There's another vein there that's kind of running diagonal. So this is, uh, this is viable. And there's one more here. Where did I put it? There, right here. It's hard to tell on these darker eggs sometimes. You just got to turn them a little. And also, at day 8, 9, and 10, you can also uh, keep an eye out for movement. And I'm not seeing anything in this one. Alrighty. Well, that's Candling 101. I've had these guys out of the incubator far too long. It's been about 10 minutes, 15 minutes maybe, so I'm going to put these back and button it all back up. And uh, thank you everyone. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe.